Now, incidentally, um, you also tried naming this using the ortho meta para approach. But if you think about it, you'll see that ortho meta and para only make sense when there's exactly two substituents. It really doesn't make sense to use ortho meta, meta and para um, uh, if there's anything besides two substituents. Uh, if there's only one substituent, obviously you wouldn't use it. And if there's three or more, you wouldn't use it. So here we have a tri substituted benzene, so ortho, meta, and para don't apply. Ortho, meta, and para are only when there's exactly two substituents on the benzene. So the only possible name here is 4 chloro 2 nitro toluene. Of course, we don't need to say one toluene because, by definition, the methyl group would get the number one carbon. Two, three, five, tribromophenol. Oops. I guess I did have the wrong thing. I went to the line. I missed the phone number, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, four, six. Excuse me. I had the wrong numbers. Two, four, six, tribromophenol. Okay, good. That's right. You just had to be a little leader in how you wrote your benzene. Yeah. Right? You were thinking the right thing, but you, the numbers just got a little blurred. <laughs> now, this is another case. You started by checking to see whether any of these have a common name. Mm -hmm. Well, OH does have a common name, which is phenol. So that gets the number one carbon. That's where the numbering has to start. It doesn't matter here whether you number down the right or down the left, because this is symmetric. So it would be 2, 4, 6, dash. Tribromophenol, all one word. Okay. So I think that's what you came up with. Good. Again, where there's more than two substituents, so we can't use O, M, or P. So this is really the only way that we could name this with the, the phenol name. And it's good that you remember that you can't just say 246 bromophenol, you have to say tribromo. Try giving a name here. One bromo three nitros um, six ethyl benzene. You saw that there was no common name here, so you used benzene. That's good. And now we need to decide where to start the numbering. So who did you give the number one number to the uh, bromine? Because of alphabetical ordering. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, there's a problem with that. Remember that we only use alphabetization to determine the numbering if there's no other way. And here, there is another way. What we really want to do is give the substituents the lowest possible numbers. So I think you numbered like this, right? One, two, three, four, and five. Is that how you numbered? Yeah, it should be one, two, it should be five nitro. Or I could do, if I'm going to go this way, I'm going to move one bromo, two uh, FO, five nitro. Okay, Correct. let's talk about that even a little bit more, though. Let's say that instead of giving the bromine the number one, let's give the ethyl the number one. Oh, so I should have said then. So here the numbers would be one, two, and five. Mm -hmm. But let's say we gave this the number one. Mm -hmm. Well, then we'd want to start the numbering in this direction to get the lowest possible numbers. So now the numbers would be one, two, and four. Mm -hmm. But that's better. One, two, and four beats one, two, and five. So we're not going to use alphabetical ordering here for the numbers. Alphabetical ordering to determine the numbers is just uh, our last resort. We only use alphabet alphabetization to determine the numbers if there's no other way. What we really prefer is to get the lowest possible numbers for the substituents. Well, here this gives us lower numbers, and for a completeness, we should consider one other possibility. We could call the nitro the number one. But then we would get the numbers one, three and four. Well, one, two, and four is better than one, three, and four, because two beats three. Okay. All right, so you might have to try out a bunch of different numbering systems here to determine which one gives you the lowest, sets of, the lowest set of numbers here. But one, two, four is lower than one, three, four, and is lower than one, two, five. Okay. So it turns out that the best thing to give the number one, number two, is the ethyl group. And notice that they were not using alphabetical order. Alphabetical order would call the bromine the number one. We only use alphabetical order if there's no other way to choose. Okay. In this case, there is another way to choose because uh, this would uh, this gives us the lower numbers. So now let's give it a name. If we use this numbering, what would the name be? Take your time. One ethyl, two bromo, four nitro benzene. We do always use the alphabetical order to determine what order to list the substituents. Sure. So which substituents? Oh, sure. <laughs> there's so many little uh, mm -hmm. nuances. Yeah, there's a lot of little nuances. So it would be 2-bromo, 1-ethyl, 4-nitrobenzene. You got it. <laughs> 2-bromo, 1-ethyl, 4-nitrobenzene. Yeah, that, that is a nuance that's hard for people to, to come to grips with. There's one thing that we always use the alphabetical order for. We always use alphabetical order just to determine what order to list the substituents in. We always use alphabetical order just to determine what order to list the prefixes in. However, we rarely use alphabetical order to determine the numbering itself, because usually we can just choose, we just do the numbering to get the lowest possible sets of numbering. But if there's more than one substituent, we still have to decide what order to list them in, and that does come from alphabetical order. Even though the ethyl got the number one, it doesn't come listed first. Okay. That makes sense. Let's talk through this one together. Notice that this is the same example as before, except that I put the substituents in different places. Now notice that in this case, it doesn't matter who you call the number one, the numbers will be the same either way. If this is the number one, then the numbers will be one, three, and five. Mm -hmm. Or if this is the number one, then the numbers will be one, three, and five. Or if this is the number one, then the numbers will be one, three, and five. So we can't just say that we're gonna choose the numbering that gives us the lowest numbers, mm -hmm. because any set of numbering would give us the same numbers. Mm -hmm. Now is when we have to use our last resort and use alphabetical, and use the alphabetical idea to determine who gets the number one. So who should get the number one here? The bromine. That's right. So I wanted to compare these two examples here. 
The only case where we use alphabetical order to determine who gets the lowest number is if there's no other way to do it. Okay. Usually the way you determine who gets the lowest number is by what would give you the lowest set of numbers completely. But when the molecule is very symmetrical, then um, all the different situations, all, all the different choices might give you the same set of numbers. No matter who we call the number one here, we're going to get the numbers one, three, and five. So as a last resort, we have to use alphabet alphabetization. Okay. Okay, and then we still have an issue. Should we do the numbering here clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, either way, we're going to get the numbers 1, 3, and 5. So again, as a last resort, we have to use alphabetization to do that. Well, who do we want to give the lower number then? The nitro or the ethyl? Just because of alphabetization. Usually we don't need alphabetization to decide numbering, but here we do because there's no other way to do it. All right, so let's come up with the full name for this then. 1-bromo-3-ethyl-5-nitrobenzene. That's right, and because we used alphabetical order to determine the numbers, um, that happens to also put the substituents in alphabetical order. So this would be 1-bromo-3-ethyl-5-nitrobenzene. 